Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. Hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. What do we have here? What do we have here? We have a CS63 driven by Flip Zobar from the BDCR clan. Shout out to you guys and I'm feeling perky and alive because I was just out doing the uh, the winter maintenance. Guys, uh, this is what you do when you're out in the outback of the great mountains of Canada in the forest. I uh, collected up all the deadfall and uh, burned it because uh, you got to break up the fuel and get rid of it before summer because you don't want all that, to, you know, in a pine forest and all the stuff falls down. If you never clear that stuff up, if there's ever a fire, you're going to get boned like he just did by a wheeled vehicle. Boned. My mare. Let, let me, boom. Didn't do anything. So you got to rake it all up and I had a big bonfire going I know there's smoke. Most of it was water vapor because the branches and stuff it's all kind of wet now so it's safe to make the fire. That's what I, that's what I did. It's fun out there. Rip roaring fire. Uh, you know, it's still burning but it's in a very safe enclosed fire pit away from trees. But there's snow and moisture and everything. You couldn't start a fire if you tried. We had fire bands all summer so Now's the time to catch up and just um, controlled uh, burn of the um, of the stuff that uh, you know could come back to haunt me in the summer. So that's what I was doing. Got my hat on. I'm not taking my hat off because then you guys will make fun of my hair. Are you satisfied? <laughs> but here I am. We're, we're getting ready to go. Oh, snapper! Oh, he killed. How, why is it? I just noticed he killed the leopard. Why is it that, uh, oh, and notice what he's doing there with the central marker. He's trying to see if he has shots on those guys. He's really making us uh, seasick. So we're going to take control here. But he's moving his central marker around to see if he gets a highlight of an enemy so that he can shoot. Uh, but what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Mom there! <laughs> no, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say something else. Uh, what was I going to say? How do you forget from one second to the next? Like, I don't have a script. I'm not reading cue cards, right? How, do, how does one have something in his head and then, uh, you know, just get distracted for a second and say, snap, and then the next second it's gone? For crying out loud. Do you guys remember what I was going to try and say? You probably got the gist of it. What was I trying to say? It'll probably never be mentioned for the rest of the video. Shoot him in the ass. Oh, Schwinn, yeah. Oh, oh, my mare up the asshole. Uh, there you go. Take another one. Uh, derriere. Hey, he's really pissed off. The badger bounced one off his ass, but now takes another one. What are his rolls here? What's the alpha of this gun? Let's see. It's uh, 390. Okay, yeah, that's, that's about right. That's about right. This guy has an amazing game in this um, fast tank. In case you weren't... Oh, 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 boom! In case you weren't sure what the... Um, what it was going to be about today, it's about fast tanks. And uh, and facing Muppets. A Char Fatura, who has four shots, decided to just... not fight. <laughs> why wouldn't he, right? Why do you... Why, if you're in a Char Fatura and you're an autoloader... Uh, why not sneak up to a medium tank and then sit there? That's a good strategy. Maybe he won't shoot me. <laughs> I only have one shell left and then I have a 52 second reload. Let me let me charge in. <clears throat> well, you know, the, the trouble with um, playing the auto loaders. What was I going to say? Oh, oh, oh. oh, he kills SPG number one. Kill SPG number two. No, no, kill SPG number two. Oh, you muppet. Oh, that would have been beautiful. You should have killed SPG. I would have went for the double SPG kill. Because it's just the right thing to do. That's what you got to do. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I remember. It's a delayed memory. 
I was going to say, after he killed the leopard, that it is almost always the case when you're featuring a fantastic game, like someone that has just an amazing game, that there's an enemy leopard that just explodes. <laughs> that there's an en That's what I was going to say. That there's an enemy leopard. It's always. This guy's going to do almost 10,000 damage. Uh, how could that be? Well, uh, let's just... Uh, there's an enemy leopard that does nothing and explodes immediately. <laughs> the, the leopard could go two ways. He could be the sniping monster that uh, carries the game. Or he could be the Muppet that explodes and allows his team to lose quickly. Uh, and, and that's... Uh, that's balance. Is balance. Yeah. Uh, balance. That, that's what it is. Are you following what I'm saying? Oh, look at the, the T-125 has a minus one. Oh, let's get confused. No, it's balanced because both teams have the same amount of medium tanks, right? So if one team has a leopard that just explodes <laughs> and another team has a CS-63 who doesn't just, who actually plays very aggressively and very intelligently, that's kind of, it's, it's balanced. Comments. And that has nothing to do with, uh, uh, I guess it has a little to do with the matchmaker, but it's not the matchmaker's fault, right? It's just that uh, uh, Muppet and a Leopard and a really good player in a CS-63, game uh, she is over, you know? Why doesn't the SPG spot in the middle? Oh, because it's no necessary. It's, oh, wait, wait, what, what, who, where, what, why can't he get a, oh, house. Boom, okay, he has reset. And he's being proxy spotted by the M103. I don't believe that that BZ-75 spotted him. I believe it was the... Uh, <laughs> ho, 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 ho! Ho, ho, ho! Ho, ho! The shit barn pulled through. The shit barn pulled through, guys. Yeah, so there's always a leopard. Snap! Oh! Oh, this guy's on fire. This guy's like a, a wrecking ball. This is just a one-man wrecking ball, this guy. He's a one-man wrecking ball. That now, see, that doesn't make sense now because I, I wanted to make the comment about the leopard right when he killed the leopard, and now it's ten minutes later, and I'm talking about the leopard, and you're going, "What? Did he kill the leopard?" Yeah, at the beginning, you know, uh, one dead leopard don't spoil the whole bunch, girl. But it does. Yeah, one dead leopard. That's it. The team is. Unless there's one dead Muppet medium on to balance, right? One dead leopard at the beginning of the game, you're taking away a formidable power uh, damage dealing tank. Uh, you're removing that. If the other teams do not have a Muppet medium, it's, it's hard to win. I know it's only one out of 15 players, but when you're talking about the caliber of a leopard or a, a damage dealing medium, right? Damage dealing medium. Uh, that can do four or five thousand damage uh, one dies immediately and one actually has a good game that's a big the other big lopsided uh, situations are when there's only one light tank per team and it's a particularly good spotting map and uh, one team has the muppet light and the other team has the uh, the low roll has the really good light now, the muppet light dies and there you go. Now look at this. Oh, it's a GW Tiger who you did not kill at the beginning. Where could he be? Where could he be now? Where could he be now? I don't know. I haven't seen any shots coming in. And that was his last known position. But the pussy is probably hiding. And this guy's got the super turbo because this game isn't fast enough yet. I think Wargaming you should install. All tanks should have the super turbo. So that the games don't last this long. Where is the GW? Is he at the last known position where he was? Oh, he's dejected that he did not get him. I don't know where he is. Is the leopard going to... The leopard? Remember what I said about that? You just came this way. I wouldn't go this way. There's no point going... Oh, the leopard went up top. So, okay, he's got to go check the corner. Oh, there he is! No! No way! He was going the right way. The, the GW Tiger is at his base. And now look at this. Uh, the Polish tank 
is just way faster than the leopard. That, that, that's in what world is a Polish tank faster than a leopard? In world of tanks, world. In world of tanks, world. Jump. Does that make sense to you? Oh, anyway, it is what it is, guys. He's got the turbocharger. The permanent turbocharger. This is the dumbest thing. Here's a guy's driving a leopard, but he's not fast enough to get the cleanup damage. Now, he could be in that little cubby hole there. Go test it. Go proxy spot that little cubby hole. There he is. Boom! Mom air! Can you believe it, guys? Only first class. Only first class for 8,914 damage, which is, that, that's insane, isn't it? That's uh, 1,362 XP and only first class. Not even 9K, my second battle in the CS63. Well played, my friend. Okay, guys, let's watch Guck from the NVMD clan in another fast tank, the LT432. And I just gotta say, in that previous game, you know when someone does 9,000 9, damage in a medium tank, mainly through his own spotting because he you know he wasn't sitting at the back camping sniping and sharing the xp with uh with a light tank when someone can do 9000 damage and in any tank i don't care which one it is and that is not ace tanker uh that says a lot about the uh, uh the power creep in this game and how it's just gotten ridiculous right because to get your uh ace tanker you have to have a better uh, score than the highest percentage, right? Uh, what is it, the top 5%? I don't even know what it is. It's, it's the, you, you have to be in the top percentile uh, and then you get the uh, ace tanker, right? And if uh, the top percentile, uh, obviously of players that are uh, really good and players that are uh, got all the equipment and are you know, at, at the elite level can get scores that are consistently so high that someone that gets 9,000 damage doesn't even get ace tanker. That means there's um, a severe imbalance in the game. And let me explain it a little bit to, as this guy just did. Another wrecking ball performance here. <laughs> just, <laughs> look at that. He, um, he spotted all those guys. How much spot? 1,300 spotting assists by these guys in the middle. And it, there's a statistical reason for what I just said. I know you guys, wait. Maybe there was just a, not enough people playing that tank or too many people. Guys, it's statistics. And this is what happens when the game gets more and more unbalanced. I'm going to explain it to you and then we won't uh, dwell on it. We'll just enjoy this game. But uh, the average score of tanks hasn't really changed a lot. It's moved up a little bit as they you know, make the tanks faster. They increase the DPM. They have the field mods, the purple equip, all the things that they've added. And the average damage of a tank doesn't necessarily increase a lot because the total HP is the same. There's still 15 versus 15. So when you look at the average uh, over millions of games of, let's say, the CS63, what's the average damage that it does per game? It's a bell curve, right? It's a, it's a bell curve and the average damage, I don't know what the number is, like 1,500, 2,000 damage, whatever it is, okay? It's probably, there's going to be really bad games or really good games. It's going to be a, a, around its own HP or maybe a little bit more, whatever the number is, right? That doesn't change very much as the game is power creeped into a disgusting shit show. And I think Wargaming looks at uh, uh, numbers like the average damage, they go, oh, well, you know, it's, it's still okay. It look, it's within the error bars of the blah, 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 right? But that's not what gives you the, uh, the ramp. <laughs> Wrecking ball. <laughs> what gives you the, the, the key statistic is the feather edge. Not the feather edge on the left side, that's zero. There's always going to be uh, people that do zero damage. It's the feather edge on the amazing side. The amazing game feather edge. The bell curve is at, this, is at the same average peak. The peak of the bell curve is the same. But the right feather end gets pushed further and further and further to the right. Because with all the power creep, and, and, and everything better, faster, stronger, you know, stronger, faster, right? Uh, 
the potential to have that extreme result increases and you have more, uh, the, the, the right side of the bell curve is pushed further to the right and there's more statistics in that extreme range. And that's the end where you have to get your third mark or get your um, ace tanker, the elite results. The elite results get pushed further and further to the right, the extreme results. And although the average is the same, all you need is a couple of extreme results uh, in a game for one or two tanks to uh, end up with a game like this. Right? Just uh, this kind of uh, thing where, uh, where they snap it right through the turret there, but I need to. Okay, that guy's not even playing anymore. Uh, it creates unbalance. So, anyway, I, I, hopefully I explained it. Um, it's just it's just a statistical certainty. Okay, it doesn't mean, you can argue all, all you want about uh, there's uh, the players aren't as good, uh, the maps are this, the wargaming matchmaker. The, you can argue all you want. It's a, there's hundreds of different reasons, but it's statistically, statistically, it will manifest it, itself in more extreme results. And we just watched an example where a guy did 9,000 damage and didn't even get an ace tanker because there's a lot of extreme results. Right? Uh, probably. Uh, uh, Eight years ago, any medium tank doing 9,000 damage would, would be ace tanker on one of the best games ever played. Now it's just, eh, first class. And by the way, hey, the game's over, guys. It's another blowout. So this guy did uh, 4,043 damage in uh, 4 minutes and 52 seconds. And uh, he says, easy. <laughs> of course it was easy. But anyways, guys, I just thought I'd show you the good games, fun games to watch. But uh, a mathematical certainty, statistics don't lie. Uh, I hope I kind of put a little, maybe you'll think about it a little bit, but that, that's how uh, you can analyze statistics and see what's happening. And the, the right side of the bell curve, the feather edge of extreme results is becoming more and more and more common. Blowouts are more and more common and fantastic results uh, sometimes don't even uh, result in, uh, in ace tanker and trying to three mark some of the really good tanks. The disparity between the players that have all the the perks and equipment and the special stuff with the average beginners or players that are playing for free that don't necessarily have all that stuff is so extreme now that trying to three mark anything in this game for free uh, or trying to be consistently uh, elite status without, um, you know, you know what I'm trying to say, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. Does it make sense? Started off slow when I forgot what I was going to say about the leopard. That was a joke. You know, but the leopard, and uh, every time there's a great game, the leopard on the enemy team explodes. That was supposed to be a joke, but it didn't. It wasn't funny because you know I didn't deliver it. I forgot the joke, and then I, I it took me like seven, eight minutes to f remember the joke. So I know it's all confusing. The commentary was all confusing, but I think you're trying to you're trying to now to process uh, exactly what my point was, and I think you understand what I'm saying, and I think you all agree because I, after all. I am right, and everyone else who dis disagrees is wrong. All the other CCs that would disagree with me are wrong. I'm right. Uh, so there you go. You take that to the bank. And I'll catch you on the next one.